Uh, let me introduce the next lecture. Uh, Darko Iv Ivkovic and Overclocking to Humanity, the Science of Cycles Reveals Future Trends. Here we go. Hello. Thank you. Thank you all for coming here today to be on Balkon, to be with us, to find the new insights, new ideas, new ways to solve the problems, to find a better way of living. Um, this is lecture, Overclocking the Humanity, the Science of Cycles Reveals Future Trends. It's a little bit different from another lectures that you heard in these two, three days. We will more speak about consciousness, about few things that we can do it practically to improve our life, to improve our daily life. Um, in this lecture, we shall try raising awareness on some fundamental truths of life, and get to idea on how to fully live our potential for our own benefit and benefit of all humankind. Um, we will examine few ideas. Most of us here present are working with computers, our programmers, web designers, and so on. Um, a programmer programs a result of a given application controlling many devices of, or technical systems. Have you ever imagined that if it's so, if you are good in programming, computer programming, in device programming, open source devices programming, and so on and so on, if not as much easier and possible to program and reprogram your own life, this precious thing. I think Mitch spoke a lot about this and I will go a little bit further on this topic. Today, you should learn how to very simply reprogram your life and create new programming and writing of your own future. Uh, the, these few ideas are very new and I don't ask you to believe me after I make this speech, but I encourage you to examine uh, to find your truth, not to take the truth that our media, mainstream media, given to us. Another thing, or second thing, we will delve in the foundation of science, of cycles, and reveal its significance. I shall provide you with some predictions on few recent global mundane events, which are influencing our daily lives. These predictions can serve us for better preparation for the future. Um, we shall also enlighten the essence of how to inter uh, of the internet as an appearance and the essence of its role in the history of mankind. We shall see why it must be duty of each of us, every one of us, to commit ourselves to the cause of free internet, or at least some minimal protection of privates. We spoke a lot of privates in internet. We also showed today in this short story, discover how each one of you can help minimize the number of conflicts in the world. Sounds a little bit strange. Yes, how to minimize the conf uh, number of conflicts in this world, which will also result at the same time, in many good for the increase in your lifestyle, you will have better life quality. The question is, how is this possible? In case you forgot, let me remind you how truly powerful you are in shaping your lives and the lives of the communities you live in. Chaos theory and quantum physics will serve us to illustrate a few things. Some older guys here, probably, <laughs> among us, might remember the great action of Maharishi Mahesh Yogi that was for two or three decades, in which uh, he called uh, a lot of people to meditate for the world peace. Uh, but don't be worried. I will not ask you to meditate today. <laughs> We will speak on um, matters that are more, more simple. 
because all great things are essentially simple in, in nature, in all nature. Uh, this is a few words about me. I, had, uh, I worked a lot with BAE, Business Intelligence System and Knowledge Management System. That was interesting thing for me to combine um, software developing and work with people. Also, I was, um, have many years of experience on market, financial markets, to improve software in financial markets, to predict future moves on these markets. I saw um, using astrology, business astrology, more than 20 years to find uh, my way through life. And um, welcome to this world. Cosmos. Cosmos is a Greek word and means accordance, order, harmony. Its opposite is chaos, emptiness. The name for cosmos itself implies that there is some kind of order, some kind of law, which make us so that between the smallest and the biggest parts of the cosmos exists some kind of order and connection. Modern theories of holographic space universe justify the very word cosmos. Whole of the cosmos is perpetual motion and vibration. All things are vibrating. Everything vibrates and moves. Everything is one on one higher level. Uh, astrology is the old ancient science of cycles and perhaps the most ancient subject also in a way most ignored today. The root of astrology, we can find the root in the past. Babylonian astrology was the first organized system of astrology arising about second millennium before Christus. There is a speculation that astrology of some kind appeared in Sumerian period, uh, third millennium before Christus, but the isolated reference to ancient celestial and means dated to this period are not considered sufficient evidence to demonstrate one integrated theory of astrology. What is interesting today for us, something that's called procession of the equinox. I hope we, you can see good, yes. Procession of equinox is a movement of the Earth due to slow but continuous change, orientation of axis rotation in relation to ideal sphere of fixed stars. The Earth axis is traveling between 12 stages of zodiac in about 25,000 years, which is on, or more, less than 26,000 years, which is why each step through a sign takes about 2,160 years. That means it takes these 25,920 years for Earth axis to complete one wobble sway or clockwise circle. We call this year, this great year, 25, between 25 and 26 uh, thousand years, great year or platonic year. And it's very important. This is, one, um, this is one of biggest cycles known in astronomy in universe. And uh, this cycle, we can divide this cycle in 12 parts. Every part gives us a big age, about, about 2,000 years. And we can imagine first, the first age that we can speak slowly here is age between 6,900 before Christus and 4,700 before Christus. That was the age of communication of writing. This great age is associated with evolutionary cultural advancement of species. The main idea was sharing ideas and trading. 
another era was era of Egypt. Egypt was on his highest level. That was the age of Taurus. The main word was control of earth, agriculture. In, the, in this age of Taurus, agriculture was discovered. The big pyramid is built and so on and so on. You can see the quick summary what was important at this age. Let me go further. Age of Aries, that was between 2,500 before Christus and three, 300 years before Christus. That was the time of conquerors and warriors. The warriors ruled the world and a lot of countries in Europe, Asia, Africa, and so on. After that, we have New Age and um, a law, the Age of Pieces. It begins with 300 years before Christus until 19th, end of 19th century. And in this period, we know that was the period of a lot of organized religion, Christianity and other religion. But that was also the age of crusades, inquisition, and so on. And then we are coming to our present era. It's very interesting, the age of Aquarius. You heard a lot of, about this topic. And this age begins at the end 19th century and will help along, along until 3,000 years in the AD. Age of Aquarius is age of great discoveries. We see in this last 100 years, big, big discoveries, uh, scientific revolution, industrial revolution. Uh, this change is so big, so quick, we cannot imagine it. We cannot understand how, how quick all the things happened. We have two big wars and so on. We went to moon, to Mars. We sent our thoughts on the end of the universe to Pluto and further. And this age is also interesting because we will, uh, we will see that in this age, the, the individuality, each of us will be stronger. This is the big trend. But the border between sexes will diminish. Will every, every year diminish. Because the energy of this era, of this age, has no gender. The general thoughts are enlightenment, individual freedom, and we have internet today. That's not, uh, that's possible to see. But we will have also a lot of wars because all the wars, these two wars was begin in this era. What's more also interesting, human life cycle. When we try to understand human life cycle, we, get, we, we begin with first breath. The first breath moment is more important than conception time. Why? Many can ask why is this? It's because a child in the period from conception until birth makes up a symbiotic organism with mother that carries in her womb and has no autonomy, not own autonomy. It breathes and feeds through its mother, which is a whole universe for it. And only in the very moment of driving, in first breath, the baby starts its autonomous existence on Earth. When the child is taking birth, it chooses the planets and stars and the moment at which it will be born. It's not opposite. The child and the mother in fact, choose subconsciously the moment which is the in greatest harmony with the child, which is in biggest and greatest resonance with the child's destiny, which will provide it for the biggest survival chance and to develop the most of his potentials. The cosmos and the man are connected on multiple levels. A more comprehensive approach to a subject uh, surpasses the limits of this lecture, so we shall observe a single example. We can demonstrate a single mathematical holographic overlapping of important cycles in both men 
and a great cosmic circle, in this case, big year. We saw a little bit about this. The bread in rhythm, the rhythm of bread is one of the most important clocks for our humans. One can survive without food for weeks, without water for days. But when the breathing cycle is disturbed and broken, that comes in a minute or a few minutes. It's a miracle that number of breath in human microcosmos, it's equivalent to the number of years in a great microcosmic rhythm. And we can see how above that below. One cycle of precession we saw lasts for 25, 920 years in modern size, and medicine holds that 18, 18 breath in, breath out per minute, it's an average, average measure. So it follows the slow, small calculation. We can see 18 breaths in 60 minutes, one hour, 24 hours, gives the exact 25,920 breath in and breath out per day. And it is exact the number of, year, number of years in a great year. This is not accidental. We can ask why such a resonance between number of hum human breath in a day and number of years in a great year. Why this exists? Perhaps because we live in a cosmos and we, we can remember cosmos is order, harmony, and accordance. And because coincidences are not so coincidental. Pythagora, big mind, he believed that every star, every planet, and every satellite give us unique vibration to its movement and its travel in space. When you are born, the melody that is created by tuning on the stars in that time, it's inscribed on your mind in its freshest, most, unso uh, most unsophisticated and most sensitive state, this state, day of birth. Through your life, this will cause your health or your illness. And your life is in tune with the origin musical harmony that exists at the time of your birth when you are healthy. And whenever you're tuning with the fundamental musical harmony breaks down, you become ill. In this connection, Paracelsus has done very significant words. He would not prescribe medicine to a patient until he had seen his astrological birth chart. And uh, it is a surprising thing that after having examined the patient birth chart, Paracelsus would cure patients who had confused other physicians successfully, patients who could not be cured by any another physician. He used it to say then, until I know the position of the stars at the time of this man's birth. It's not possible to know the notes of his inner harmony. And unless I know the arrangement of this inner harmony, how can I make this man healthy? In everyday life, the time seems linear to us, like a line. What does it mean? that is traveling from the past to the present moment and towards the future. It somehow, somehow implies that there is no, re, no returning moments, no returning things. But our ancestors and um, ancient civilization, they seem to know something more. Because the ancestors of our civilization have kept a knowledge on the fact that time is of a cycling nature, or better yet, to say, spiral nature, like combo of linear circular motion. Time is like spiral, like our DNA. DNA spiral is a picture of time, how we develop our life in time. It's not accidental. If time moves in cycles, it means that there are some patterns that are recurring in specific moments of time. 
Repetition of same or similar events creates the possibility of their prediction in marginal moving up to 86%. If you wish to know the future, you have to know the past. Because the future holds nothing that has no seed in the past. The old and tested saying, the old and tested saying says, the one who does know its history is doomed to repeat it. There is a small saying from Nikola Tesla, big mind, who says, one of the present degree of mankind evolution in which there is no awareness of historical occurrences and their cosmological causes, occasional shakes are still natural. Even more fierce battle shall be fought between the East and the West. You can see that was 20th of December 1914. That was in time of big war. Now, we can give some of global predictions and we go to another question. Global predictions given from a science of cycle are saying a few interesting things. First thing, cut down of number of workplaces, we see it every year, and this integration of extreme decline of many states in our world will last until 2023. That's a big process, and uh, you can think about it and see that it's better to create your own job, your own company, your own factory, because there is no secure job. You cannot think, I will find it, because this crisis will go further until 2023. Another thing, until 2018, we will have a threat of great war. We see it yeah, now, Ukraine and so on, what happens on the Middle East. But big war will not happen because the general tendency will be to control local wars, to give it smaller. But we will see another small wars are coming in different parts of the earth. And the third thing, it's important, a period from 2018 to 2026, is a period very dangerous to world peace. Whole monetary system, big banks, uh, world banks will collapse. Dollar will cease to exist as a currency, which will pay to great changes to can open doors to worldwide conflict. That means we should do something, every of us should do something, do something better for our loved ones, also for the community and for whole world. Then we go slowly to practical part. A little bit uh, a li basic knowledge about brain waves. I hope you know something. And we come to topic of this theme: overclocking. Clouds, clock rate, overclocking, and brain waves. I think the most of us here know these things. The clock rate typically refers to the frequency at which a CPU is running, central processor unit in every computer. It's measured in hertz. And overclocking is process of making a computer or component operate faster than the clock frequency specified by the manufacturer by modifying system parameters. Most overclocking techniques increase power consumption, it's normal. General gives more heat, which must be dispersed if the chip is to remain operational. The purpose of overclocking is to increase the operating speed of given hardware. The trade-offs are increasing power consumption and fan noise. The system can become unstable if the equipment is overlocked too much at the risk of damage due to excessive over voltage or heat generation. In extreme cases, costly and complex cooling is required and can solve the problem. But we will not speak about uh, 
overclocking in computer. We, we were going few further. And we can ask us together, what is the clock, similar clock of the man? What's the frequency of this CPU in our brain? Brain waves in human can be categorized in accordance to their patterns in four main categories. You can see it here. Uh, delta, half until four hertz, theta, four until eight hertz, alpha, eight until 12 hertz, and beta. What we can say about these things, delta waves, the first wave, delta wave, very slow, the most slowest wave of the brain is specific for state of dreamless deep sleep. We are no, not really conscious. Theta waves, number two, are characteristic for a dream state. Next, uh, third state of mind, the alpha waves are specific for state between the state of being awake and dream state mostly being associated with the phase when we are just awake, awoke, but not completely. Or those moments we are falling asleep. A transit phase with cronops, unless they are experienced in meditation. Because when we are getting older, we have a problem to go to this alpha phase and be aware or think something in this phase. It's very difficult to be there in the present moment that we have uh, alpha waves. Uh, what's interesting, that brain f f functions simply say it on most in the frequency that is close to the age, especially by children. That means the child, the child's brain, when the child is at age five, often works on these five hertz. With six here, got to more to six hertz, and so on and so on, moves, moves up with every year. With children aged over 20 years, that means over this border of 12 hertz, alpha waves, many memorized events from early childhood remain tied to lower frequencies, which the mind can hardly reach in later years without descending to sleep state. In mid-20s, 30s, you have problem. When you slow your brain waves from beta, we will say about beta more, this normal, normal state of mind, now when we are speaking together, when we are going from, from beta to alpha, we are more relaxed and so on. We can show this. This is delta waves. You can see a little bit more uh, in details, this range. Um, too much of Delta waves give us brain injuries, learning problems, inability to think, and so away. Too little inability to rejuvenate the body. Then these theta waves, when we have, when we are too much in theta, then we are, we have poor emotional awareness and stress. And when we are sleep enough, optimal, we have creativity, emotional connection with another people. We have strong intuition, and we are in state of relaxation. And some depressant medicine increase theta waves. Um, alpha waves, we see it. This is the moderate part, 8 to 12 hertz. It's interesting because we have, uh, in astrology, we have this division in 12 parts. They, they, here we have 12 hertz until we are coming to normal daily life frequency of our brain. In um, acupuncture, we have 12 meridian. That means it's, it's not accidental. There is a lot, a lot natural laws in these things. Um, what increases alpha waves? We see alcohol, marijuana, relaxants, some antidepressants, and especially rakia, I think, but we must try it after <laughs> with Rakia party. We will see it if this right or wrong. Then beta waves. The beta waves is most known 
better waves are specific for normal state when we are awake, when we were thinking, uh, analyzing, uh, working, uh, soldering, iron, and so on. This is the no so-called normal state of mind. Uh, what is interesting that brain, uh, how, how to put a simple, hmm. We have experienced in early childhood, all the things from early childhood becomes unconscious for us in later years, and it's very hard to reach. We go further. Planet Earth has also his resonance, and the natural resonance of planet Earth is about eight hertz. This, um, this is so-called Schumann resonance. It's very interesting. For example, ancient Indian rishis in India, the saints in India, they call the atone with this frequency, this om that we heard a lot in movies, in books, and so on. That of solitary level, in accordance to brainwave type division, is on the very edge of theta and alpha range. We can see it when we are coming back. 8 to 12, you see. And when you have theta waves, this is 8, and from 8 we go to 12. Yes. Uh, the very oscillation of the planet, very helping the function in alpha state, the frequent range between conscious and unconscious, which is for the most people in immature age, in the range of unconscious, this is below the beta level. That is how the majority of humanity unconscious content can still comfortably remain in the collective unconscious. And the unconscious had more support in every man with it. Human unconscious part hides a lot of traumatic events for which human wasn't ready to deal with, to face this problem in life. Either it will be too painful for him or destructive for his psychic. The positive some experiences in unconscious in most cases has the function to protect conscious and the reason of individual to keep the same sake. <laughs> However, according to researchers, never the kids brought a rapid change of oscillatory frequency of planet Earth. This frequency is changing now very quick in the past two decades. That means the natural resonance of planet Earth is not 8 hertz now. It's above about 11, uh, 11 hertz. That means at the end of alpha, alpha waves in our brains, it's almost beta, almost conscious part of the brain. There is a big reason why we live in this time, this big change. The shift in frequency, which is reversibly equal, gives time the subjective feeling of time getting more dense, thicker. That time has speed up. We have such feeling, time is speeding up, speeding up, we cannot catch on with, uh, with them. And creates more stress and pressure on metal plane, this changing, this changing natural frequency of the Earth, because the Earth is much bigger and stronger with his magnetic field than our slow, small field. The field of Earth is resonating more and more toward conscious beta level. Yeah, this beta level, 12 to 14 hertz, yes. Which results in rapid and violent torrents of unconscious into the conscious part of the being. A similar thing is happening globally with the humanity's collective unconscious. All was what was earlier unconscious, are trying to push way out from this dark part of our being to come to light. 
and we must be prepared. When we are not prepared, then we have a lot of trouble. Nature and social processes in mutual synergy introduce the individual and their minds into states of overclocking. What I mean, this term overclocking, is that this frequency is very quick changing. And conflicts in the world, more aggressive battle for survival, greater control from Big Brother, fear of losing job, all these things bring more stress and dancing of time, the feeling like time is more tense and tense and tense. Overclocking the humanity is happening to accelerate its evolution. That has its purpose. And in accordance to change in the big year, 25,920 years, it's happening in this time, now and here, with us together. The one cannot follow the change which will happen in the next decades, will suffer mentally or physically through illness, which both have their cause, the discord of the soul. We should get introduced to this new paradigm and reprogram our lives accordingly. Yes. Next question is how to program and reprogram our lives because we are all good in programming computer, making new software, new video games. I don't know which video game is now the most uh, you are keen on. Okay. But how to program our lives? How can we change that that's most important, our life? The biggest earth computer and the biggest programmable substance on the planet is water. There is a lot, a lot of experiments, and you can find it when you want to find it. You can find it on the internet. But please don't read only mainstream media and take the things from them as a granted. Please tune on your mind and examine, try out see one or another alternative, see what's right and what's wrong. Water covers majority of our planet. We are 60 until 80% of made of water. That depends on our age. Water has a lot of odd char characteristics. It's one of the rare substances which expands when cooled. It's not normal for a substance that's opposite. Many of you experience probably cracked bottles in the freezer, and um, it has been proved that its structure of water remembers the experience it had passed. You can find uh, a lot of experiments they can prove it. But no, that's, that's not all. That's not all. There is an interesting, very interesting guy, a Japanese uh, guy, Masaru Emoto. I hope, I hope a lot of you heard about him. And there is a lot of things on YouTube, on internet. Uh, Masaru Emoto has published interesting results from experiments where he proved that water remembers both our thoughts and information it came into contact with. And this is a new paradigm also, that water can take our thoughts as a medium, like, like drive, like computer. Uh, mainstream science normally puts it into question because of most of scientists are being founded by multinational corporations, such as pharmaceutical industries, which have no interest that people should know simple procedures and information which could enable them to take over their lives. Do not automatically trust those who have complete control over mainstream media, I say another time. Make an effort to get close to the truth that will set you free. Uh, there is another example, for example, in Christianity, 
um, ever since its conception, tells the stories about strong effect of holy water. The water that receives a prayer, it's something different other than numerous experimental results from a motto. Practical application of that knowledge give us, gives you a cutting edge technology that one which enables you through consumption of toad programmed water to program your toads for longer period of time, your beliefs and processes in your own organism. It's very strong. It takes a little bit time. It's very strong. You should try. There is no cost. It's interesting. It's open source. <laughs> it's open source. Um, that is a simple path of direct influence to one subconscious and it resembles auto-hypnosis, for example. Only here we use water as a material carried of su suggestion. We can carry suggestion, good suggestion in water, put it in water. Let us leave for a while a motto, but I encourage you to, to search a little bit more about Masaru Emoto and um, go to India. Several thousand years old Indian Ayurveda, Indian medicine, claims for a long time that it's not only important that you eat food of good quality, but it's even more important who you eat with. It's important why you what you eat, but even more with who and what kind of thoughts and emotions you are eating with. If you are, for example, angry or furious on somebody during the meal, even the best food, the best food will spoil in your digestive system. That means best food, worst thoughts or emotion, that's junk food. You, have, you are not healthy when you're doing this in the long run. While you cook and prepare the food in which the biggest ingredients is water normally, think, please think positive thoughts and affirmation of love in your soul. Prepared like that, the food receives a special quality which you will notice. That's how our mother and grandmothers cooked for us, which a lot of love they have put in the food itself. Family is very more healthy and more amicable. Today we all eat on foot, alone, separated, forgetting that family lunch is all about. Try doing the motto experiment with rice. It's very interesting, it can be seen on YouTube. You put it. Asaro Emoto experiment with rice, which you can easily repeat in your kitchen, that can be your own experiment. Don't listen about mainstream media. Make your experiment and see what's the truth. Uh, in this experiment, food treated with different emotions get charged shockingly, uh, shockingly in another way. Check this, please. Don't take for granted. I will show you a small thing from a motto. What a motto does. Dr. Emoto exposed music, words, spoken words, typed pictures and videos to water after it was crystallized. The water's response was truly majestic. We can see a few things here. First, good emotions, put it in water and freeze this emotion of love. Then thank you. And you will see how, which form has a bad thoughts and emotion. Then love and appreciation. Nice. Nice crystal form. Happiness. Truth. And then crystallized water from lake after prey offering. So it's good. 
and you will see how is water before the prayer. Before you're offering a prayer, it's totally loosed his structure. Done word Mother Teresa. Mm-hmm. You, the toads, you make me sick, I will kill you. That went up. No symmetry, no really good energy. Then soul. Adolf Hitler. This image come out from the water. Then gratitude. And then simply taking holy water. Then word peace. The difference is so big, you, you cannot say anything. Then Beethoven's pastorale give us this form of water. An amazing grace. Then demon. You see how nice this demon looks, yeah? And then after exposure to a child. And then anger. You see it clearly, the difference. What is memorized in water. And if thoughts can do that to water, and we are 60, 70, 80% of water, then imagine what our thoughts can do to us when you sing, I cannot do this. Then you are programming your water in your body not to be possible to achieve some, some tea. Okay, we are here, Emoto, yeah. Uh, how you can do this programming? There is a few ways. You can speak to the water. You can put the water to extension of music. You can pray. But you can write something on a glass or water. And after, this, is, this was for me amazing. I tried some experiments, but I saw that, that's like said, you should make your own experiments and see what is the truth. Um, you can do this, put a glass bottle filled with water to stand in the sun for some time to take energy from the sun and insert your thoughts and wishes we have a piece of paper that writes your program to the water. And try. I tried with uh, my plants on the balcony. That was amazing. I treated two pieces of plants with this water and other plants with another water. That was the same type of plants. And in one month, that was amazing. The difference was so big. But you should try it. You should see alone. I said, not to believe to me what I spoke. For more information, write Masari Emoto, and there is a lot of things, a lot of things on internet, YouTube. You can see, you read it, see the pictures, um, interesting experiments, and so on. Additional argument concerning the memory of the water is, for example, homeopathy. Homeopathy is based on memory of the water. It helps curing a lot of people today. But it's problematic for big industry pharma. They don't have then enough geld 
for cooperation. Um, homeopathy helps curing a lot of people. And many will think there is no real work there. Homeopathy, that's probably just placebo effect. But what shall we do with this fact that homeopathy successfully treated animals too? Can we say that, what, animal and placebo effect? Animal should not know anything about placebo effect. Intelligent man finds this enough for further research. I hope you have some, you took some ideas. Uh, what is collective unconscious? It's interesting question. We spoke a little bit about collective unconscious, and I think it's important to to review it. Collective unconscious is a term from of analytical psychology, coined by Carl Jung, Carl Gustav Jung. It's a part of the unconscious mind expressed in humanity, and all life forms with nervous systems like we and describes how the structure of this psyche autonomically organized experience. Jung distinguished the collective unconscious from the personal unconscious. In that, the personal unconscious is a personal reservoir of experience unique to each individual, while the collective unconscious collects and organizes those personal experiences in a similar way with each member of particular species man, woman, some species, species, animal species, and so on. There is an interesting effect with named the 100 monkey effects. Some scientists were conducted a study of uh, macaque monkeys on the Japanese Iceland Koshima in 1952. These scientists observed that some of these monkeys learned to wash sweet potatoes before they eat, and gradually this new behavior spread through the younger generation of monkeys in usual fashion, through observation and repetition. Watson then concluded that the researchers observed that once a critical number of monkeys on this island was reached, the so-called 100 monkey, this previously learned behavior instantly spreads across the water to monkeys are nearby islands. There, is, there was no physical contact be between another monkeys, but when you have a critical mass of individua, and they have some knowledge, some thing, this critical mass can achieve that your knowledge, information, or energy, or something, emotions are going through space. They are projecting, and another people, the same species, can take this information and use it. It's like radio in such a way, like radio, like our handies, phones, and so on. And then we come to interesting thing, internet. Internet, what's internet? Internet is a materialization of collective unconscious. We are slowly more and more connected between together like in collective unconscious, because collective unconscious and this unmaterial thoughts are connecting us, but we cannot see it. It's not real in some way for us, but there, these, these things exist. The internet is so-called materialization of this collective unconscious. Controlling the internet is not only controlling you and collective unconscious, but also your past and your future is in the worst. That leads to losing the freedom, complete spiritual control, and goes to complete mass zombifying. Is this okay for you? I think no. I think no. Then please commit yourself to privacy and freedom on the internet now, from this moment, because the process of controlling the internet is rush going on, rush, very rush going on. We spoke about Tor, but I heard also strange things. The Tor is um, for pressure that, that money is given from State of America, from USA, then we can ask how is this independent so on. I don't, I don't know if this information is true. There is probably some person more, um, more knowing about this. We can speak another time, but 
there was a lot of question. Uh, how to improve your life? How to improve? By being more conscious. Computerization is making unconscious living more and more easy. We are eating, we are not really aware what we are eating, but we're doing something on the internet, we, we are game, gaming something, we don't know if we're eating 10 burgers or 12 and so on, so on. Um, computerization is a problem and we have to fight it to keep the essential balance of life. It's not easy, but it's important. Uh, we can give an example of awareness with some type of stage. A very clear example of difference between conscious and unconscious is a picture of a stage which is filled with chaotically scattered stage props, balls, chairs, and some stuffs. If anyone would tell you that you should quickly move from one end of the stage to another and light the stage with the big stage lights, it will be fairly easy to move through those objects and succeed the crossing. But if someone turn off the lights, it will be fairly easy to move, uh, not so easy to move. To find yourself in complete darkness, your task of stage crossing will become a painful experience. The light are the only difference and everything else in the same in both cases. The lights can be understood as allegory for awareness. Your awareness makes all the difference in the world. Without increasing awareness in important situations, the unconscious becomes the greatest reality. The unconscious becomes the greatest reality. In a conflict with our limited consciousness, which is always protected by unconscious part, the unconscious always wins, making itself as a factor on which you have to do it. You have a question, please? Oh, yeah, we are, we are at the end. We are at the end. How to improve your life and at the same time contribute to peace and decrease the number of conflicts in our world? Because you remember, we have not so good, um, not so good things, not so good prediction for year and after 2018. I hope I'm wrong. But... We will see.